Well, I think, Kirsty, today here in Davos, we've really had the sort of day after the party. I think the speech itself, uh, whilst not made here by Theresa May, went down pretty well. There's this idea that at least now we had some certainty that all the nods and winks about being in or out of the single market were over. Theresa May made it very clear that Britain was coming out of the European Union. But today, a little bit of the hangover the day after. We've had news today from banks here, HSBC based in London and the Swiss bank UBS, that they will be moving jobs or are planning or looking at moving jobs from London onto the European continent because Britain would be out of the single market and that would mean that some of their services they provide from London would have to be provided from within the European Union. And as you say, Kirsty, noises off from the Foreign Secretary, uh, some negative reactions from France to those comments by Boris Johnson and really quite a negative thought today from Davos. But don't forget, of course, here, most businesses supported Britain remaining in the European Union. So it's a particular type of cohort you get in Britain, which doesn't mean they speak for the whole of British business. Earlier today, I interviewed the head of uh, the International Monetary Fund, Christine Lagarde, who has been very negative about Brexit in the past. And I started by asking her if the UK leaving the single market would be bad for Britain. You know, you have to look at all the parameters. You have to look uh, at the, um, the monetary policy, the exchange rate, the interests uh, that would be charged. You have to look at the, uh, the, the engines for growth, whether that very solid UK consumption, which has held the economy together and better than we had thought, will, will last. Uh, whether investment, both domestic and from uh, the rest of the world, will persist or whether there will be a significant reduction and under what terms uh, the exports will uh, eventually take place between the UK and the rest of the world. What I know for sure is that there is a lot of work to be done in the coming uh, weeks, months and possibly years. Risks to economic growth then for Britain and for the European Union through this process? Uncertainty is always a risk and uh, you, you, we know where we are at the moment. Uh, as you pointed out, the UK is still in the European Union and trade and movement of capitals and uh, operations of banks are still being conducted under the same pattern, under the same rules. What it is two years after uh, the trigger has been pulled to be defined. Before the referendum, the IMF was very clear that the results of a Brexit vote, you said yourself, would go from pretty bad to very, very bad. Mm -hmm. The UK economy has defied expectations, is growing relatively strongly. You've upgraded growth now for 2017. Were you, were you wrong when you said that before the referendum? I think what has been extraordinary is, number one, the action of the Bank of England, which has sort of instantly uh, taken hold of the situation, uh, decided remedies, and supported the economy in a very, very vigorous and efficient way. What has also been quite remarkable is the behavior of the British consumers, the way in which, with uh, confidence, they've continued to consume and consume and consume. Now, we are still of the view that, particularly on the investment front uh, and on the uh, export or trade front, there is still yet to come. And by that I mean um, once uncertainty clears and if people feel that their ability to set up shop in the UK and operate throughout the geographical area that is European Union uh, is not working as well as it did, the investment decision will change.